In this video, we'll take a look at how to model, analyze, and design a masonry wall panel using Risa 3D. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and jump into our model settings. And we're going to take a look in the solution tab. So when we go to the wall panel section in this tab, we see we have a few options here regarding masonry wall panels. So by default, uh, we have a 12 inch mesh size for uh, the wall panels. Once the program submeshes it for the finite element analysis that it's going to do on the wall panel, we can actually change that to whatever value we wanted to. Um, and it would kind of help increase or decrease the solution times uh, depending on the level of accuracy you need in your finite element analysis. Additionally, we can also change the uh, P delta for walls. We can turn that on and off. And then we can also tell the program if we'd like it to optimize masonry walls or not. Um, and if, it, if we do choose to optimize them, we can tell it the number of iterations that we would like it to go through in order to reach the optimal solution for our masonry walls. Now we can go over to the codes tab and just make sure we're selecting the appropriate code for our project. So in this case, I'm going to choose TMS 40216 strength design and I'll just go ahead and press OK. So now we can go ahead and draw a wall panel. So to do that, we just come to the draw elements section, press wall panels. And you see here this property window live updated to correspond to the wall panel button we just pressed. So now I'm just going to go ahead and change this to masonry in the wall material drop down menu. And the material set can also be changed from concrete, clay, or general masonry. And we see here, as I expand these, we have a few more uh, bits of detail that we can go into regarding our particular wall panels. So we have everything here from the nodes that are going to define the corners, some more material in-depth material properties, the axial reinforcement, in-plane reinforcement, advanced properties such as I-cracked, and then even some specifics about the lintels if we're going to punch any openings into this wall panel. So now I can go ahead and just come over to our drawing grid and I can start drawing this masonry wall panel. So all I need to do is click one point, move my cursor, and it's going to work on a diagonal basis. So now I just need to go to the lower right hand and click again, and now I have a masonry wall. So now we can take a look at our design rules for our wall here. So I just click on my wall, and now I can just go where it says design rule in the properties panel, I can just click this triple dot button here and it's going to ask me if I want to edit or view the existing wall design rule or create a new wall design rule. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit the existing design rule. And so right away, what you get is this dialogue that pops up that kind of gives you a nice graphic uh, looking in plan view here at your wall so that you can define things like the block grouting. So we can change this from partially grouted to fully grouted, uh, reinforced or unreinforced. You can choose your block thickness here. So I can go ahead and change this to eight inch and your boundary zone width is shown here. And so here you can actually define the minimum and the maximum for that. So again, the program is acting on a design basis. So it's gonna choose the optimal boundary zone width based on the loads applied to your wall. You can tell it the bars per cell. So you can see that that graphic updates to reflect that after you make your selection. Uh, vertical bar size, you can change that as well. So we'll just go ahead and use number sixes and the horizontal bar size as well. You also have a checkbox here for a shear increase per, uh, per code. And then um, we can look at the axial reinforcement section. So here we can specify the minimum, again, a minimum and a maximum bound for the bar or the grout spacing. So if I were to switch to partially grouted, then uh, this would affect more so the, the grout spacing. So if I go to fully grouted, then it's going to affect really more so the bar placement. And then the location of the vertical bars, you can see here, right now it's set to center, but you have options like non-centered, uh, each face, as well as staggered. And then the vertical bar size can be chosen here as well. So next we'll take a look at the lintel tab. So that was just the general wall. And so now we can take a look at the lintel. So here you see a nice cross section of your masonry lintel. You can assign uh, the depth that you would like it to use in the calculations. And then you can modify your rebar cover here for those longitudinal bars. And then again, you can specify minimum and maximum for the bars per layer. And so the program will have an upper and a lower bound there to design the rebar for you. Again, choosing your bar size is really easy and number of rebars per layer, you can update that. 
And again, so you see your graphic update here and you can change the center to space, center to center spacing of the rebar. Stirrup size as well, you have the option to change that. And then here we give you the option to modify the bearing distance for uh, that calculation at the end of your lintel here. So once we've got all that set up, we can just simply press OK and that'll save the changes to our wall design rule. And now what we need to do is create some basic load cases so that the program can reference those in the load combinations. So in our case, we're going to just do a dead load and an earthquake load. So I can just type in whatever name I want into the description. If I press D, it automatically brings up dead load. And I'm going to punch in negative one into the Y gravity column. And that just tells the program that I'd like for it to account for the self weight of the masonry wall. And the same way, I'm just going to go ahead and choose EL, earthquake load, from the category. So now I can close out of this. And let's go ahead and add some loads. So to do that, we just come to the draw loads section. I can press line load and I'm going to start with dead load. So I'm going to choose negative, uh, let's say negative 0.2 kip per feet and do the same thing for the end magnitude. And if I bring this window over, you can see we have our units here, kip per feet. And I can change this to click to apply and then that'll just allow me to click the top of the wall and now I have my dead load applied. So that would basically simulate the uh, whatever diaphragm I have at that level that braces the wall for uh, at a plane and also gives it the tributary dead load as well. And then I'm just going to do the same thing and apply some earthquake load. So I just choose EL for my BLC and I'm going to change the direction to follow this global coordinate system. Uh, I'm going to change it to the X direction and in this case I'm going to go let's say 3.3 .3 kit per foot. And that's my seismic load. Again, click to apply, click the top of the wall, and now we have that. So I could also toggle between the basic load cases by clicking this drop down menu. I can view the dead load again, or I can view the earthquake load. So now I'm going to go ahead and double click this wall panel, and it'll bring open the wall panel editor. So from here, I can start to add openings into my wall. So I click my modify openings button, and I can just punch a small opening into this wall panel. I can also change the wall grid size if I need a, a more refined uh, increment pattern. So I could change this to 0.5 by 0.5. And you can see there it live updates. So this way, if I had uh, opening with the dimensions on six inch increments, then I can work off of it that way. I can also view my wall panel from different perspectives. I can click the different um, views here and also the isometric view if I want to view it in 3D. I'm just going to go back to XY. I can also display my loads from within the wall panel editor. So I just click this display loads button. And again, I can just toggle that between my different basic load cases. And then there's some display options here to go ahead and turn certain items off for clarity. I can turn off the rendered view if I want to just view it uh, without that. I can turn the nodes on and off if I wanted to. And so now let's just generate some load combinations for our model. So I'll go ahead and click out of this. I'll click on the load combinations button and then use the load combination generator. So this is great so that you don't have to actually punch in each individual uh, variable in the load combination. The program will actually generate them for you based on the code that you select. So since we're doing uh, strength design for masonry, I'm going to go ahead and choose IBC strength and I'm going to leave out the deflection combinations. So I'll just press generate and then generate some seismic load combinations by doing the same thing. From here, we've loaded the, we've modeled the wall, we've loaded it, uh, created some load combinations, so now we're ready to go ahead and press solve. I'm gonna go ahead and solve a batch with an envelope, meaning it's gonna solve and store the results for each individual load combination, as well as report to me uh, in a quick summary the maxes and mins based on that envelope solution. And the first thing I like to do after solving the model is look at the wall panel design spreadsheet. So if we just expand this and we look at specifically the masonry related tabs, we can start with masonry in plane design. And we can see here we have an axial unity check value, a bending unity check value, and a shear unity check value. So if we had add multiple uh, wall panels on this project, we could just right click here, sort, and then view them from a maximum to a minimum to kind of quickly look at where our walls stand on our project as a whole. Now we can go to the masonry out of plane. 
and we can see here that we're registering zero because we didn't apply any out-of-plane loads but this is where all that information will be stored in a really handy quick way to reference and then our masonry lintel since we had an opening in our wall we do have a, an associated lintel and so this gives us a quick view of where that stands from a code check perspective we can also view a little bit more detail in a graphic perspective so i'm just going to go ahead and turn off the display grid and now when i come back to home we have an option here to display the wall stresses so we have a large drop down menu of forces that we can display i'm going to go ahead and choose fxy and now we can see the uh, color based stress contours here and i can even change my load combination and the stresses will auto update for us and it's going to reference this legend here on the right hand side for the colors associated with the particular stresses in the wall additionally if i turn this off we could use the wall panel labels and toggle through these or click the drop down menu to view certain uh, certain rules about our wall here so the number the local axes and the design rule uh, even the length of the wall we can toggle through so i'm gonna go ahead and turn these off and next up if we really want to get into uh, the detail about the wall we just click our detail report button and then click on the wall itself now i can expand this and here we get um, every last detail about this particular wall panel so we have input data some material properties geometry about the wall and then here we have a design summary for the entire wall uh, everything from in-plane checks to out-of-plane checks and it's broken down on a region by region basis which you can reference here you see r1 r2 r3 and r4 we can take a look at the wall reinforcement as far as vertical reinforcement and horizontal reinforcement and then we can also take a look at each individual region uh, for in plane and out of plane again with some more criteria materials and geometry we can also check each limit state for that particular region and we're provided with a unity check value and a pass or fail lastly we can take a look at the opening design here we see some force diagrams associated with it as well as a bending and a shear design. Additionally, we can look at the cross-section detailing for our lintel. In this case, we are looking at a cross-section which shows the uh, designed rebar for our lintel based on the loads that we've applied. This concludes our look at masonry wall panel design. For more information regarding RESA 3D, please visit resa.com.